The gospel today shows the generosity of Mary in bringing in anointing, anticipating whether she realized or not the anointing of our Lord's body for his at it after his crucifixion. And our Lord himself makes that known that she, she has done it for the day of my burial. Then he goes on to say that for the poor you have always with me, but you will not have always. And of course, in a sense that he will be in heaven, although he is in a certain sense also with us always, as he promised to the apostles at, uh, before his ascension. Yet this event shows the generosity that she showed in, in spending a lot of uh, a, a very costly ointment on our Lord. He did not rebuke her for that because it was done out of love and, and done of generosity. And the church is recognized and the saints and church fathers recognizing this and also a reason for having um, spending money for beauty in the sacred liturgy, investments and sacred vessels, etc. because it is for the love of Christ. It is like that, that expensive ointment that it's done for the glory of God and to show forth the love and reverence toward Christ. Now, these words about the poor uh, always being with us call to my mind uh, something written a few years back by uh, Robert Cardinal Sarah in his book, God or Nothing. And he makes a very important distinction which few recognize even within the church. He goes on to speak about um, a slogan, that an advertising slogan of a Catholic charitable organization, he says, which was almost insulting to the poor. Let us fight for zero poverty. He goes on to say, not one saint, and God alone knows the tremendous number of saints of charity that the church has brought forth in 2,000 years, ever dared to speak that way about poverty and poor people. He goes on to, to point out the love that God has for the poor. And he says, poverty is a Christian, is a Christian value. The poor person is someone who knows that by himself he cannot live. He needs God and other people in order to be, flourish, and grow. The church must not fight against poverty, but rather wage a battle against destitution, especially material and spiritual destitution. It is critical to make the commitment that all men might have the minimum they require in order to live. And this is a point also that St. Teresa of Calcutta spoke about, that the spiritual poverty uh, among so many is far greater than the material. And of course, she had a great love for the poor and recognized their great dignity. He goes on to speak about that we have we do not have the right to confuse destitution and poverty because in doing so we would seriously be going against the gospel. And then he says, "Recall what Christ told us: the poor you will always have with you, but you do not always have me." Those those who want to eradicate poverty make the Son of God a liar. They are mistaken and lying. He goes on to say. Some, similarly, I have often think about the vow of poverty taken by religious. Does our world still know that the men and women who pronounce it do so in order to be as close to, as possible to Christ? He then says a little later on, the Son of God loves the poor. Others intend to eradicate them. What a lying, unrealistic, almost tyrannical utopia. We must be precise in the choice, our choice of words. The language of the, U the UN, the United Nations, and its agencies who want to suppress poverty, which they confuse with destitution, is not that of the Church of Christ. The Son of God did not come to speak to the poor in ideological slogans. The Church must banish these slogans from, the, from her language, for they have been stupefied and destroyed peoples who are trying to remain free in conscience. So this is in, from God or Nothing, if you have the book, pages 140 to 142, and really expresses well the reality that, that, that of course, we are to help assist the poor in living a good life, and we help those who are destitute, who are desperate for food and, and need, but we do not ever disparage the virtue or vow of poverty and the reality of, of, of our Lord's words and the words of our Lord in the gospel. And so um, we're reminded, of course, then, of the importance of almsgiving, 
something that we've been urged to do in a special way during Lent. In, in the uh, we're reminded of that important and uh, necessary work, as well as all the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.